Hi. I want to tell you about tension in a string today, how, how physics, an introductory physics class, would handle tension in a string. So what's meant by tension in a string? So um, here are two examples of some tension in the string. Um, let's see, we have a mass that's hanging over, it's attached to a string, the string is hanging, is draped over a pulley, and then the other side of the string is attached to a, a fixed wall. Okay, so we'd say that that has some tension in that string. And then um, with this one too, um, this situation, um, the maybe this is a frictionless table. This mass is heading down and it's pulling on the string, which in turn then that string pulls on this mass and it's accelerating to the right. So we're going to uh, be able to talk about both cases. One, one where there's the string is just stationary and also uh, for the case where the string might be accelerating. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the, uh, the string has a negligible mass. Okay, now in physics, negligible mass means no mass. <laughs> so the problem might say, assume that the mass of the string is negligible. They mean that the string is, has virtually no mass. Okay, now of course all strings have mass, but this is the ideal case. We can add the complication later. It's not very difficult to talk about strings that then have mass and how that affects the problem. Um, we also, um, I want you to know that strings only pull. I know that seems obvious, but sometimes people forget. Strings only pull, and they never push. They can't push. And in terms of when they pull, when a string pulls, the string always pulls in the direction uh, that they are oriented. So they never pull in any other direction other than in the direction they're oriented. Let me give you a for instance of that. I'll flip this paper over. And I have this jar, and there's a string attached to this dar jar. Okay, now notice that um, this string, I, I can't, it, I can pull the jar this way. Okay, but I can't pull it that way without moving that way. I gotta, I gotta put this, the string that way. Okay, and I certainly can't push on that jar. See how I, it's not able to, the string can't push on the jar. So strings only pull, and they pull in the direction they're oriented. So like th this string, if it has tension, it's pulling that way. If this has tension, it's pulling that way. It doesn't, it's not pulling that way. I mean, there might be a component that's pulling that way, but it's pull, the, for, the tension is that way that's pulling on that, on this jar. Okay. So keep that in mind here. Now, um, let's start out with a case where we have um, a string that's attached to a wall. And here's the wall. Uh, this is the ground. And here's our string. Okay. And um, I want you to see why we say that the tension is the same throughout a string. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, break this string into a bunch of little segments. So let's, um, let's say that um, I'm pulling this way with 5 newtons. So I take this end of this rope and I pull on the very end of that rope with 5 newtons. Now let me break this into little parts. So segment 1, segment 2, segment 3, 4, 5 six, seven, all the way down the line. Of course, we could do that so that there's a, a million of those in there, the little segments. Okay, now um, each segment has no mass because this is a massless rope. But let's call this segment one, two, three, four, and so on, all the way down the line. Okay, so um, with that said, Um, let's look at segment one. Segment one, I'm pulling five newtons on that, and it's not moving. This rope isn't moving. So if it's not moving, then we know that segment two must be pulling on segment one with five newtons as well. So if we just look at segment one, here's segment one. There's five newtons that way. And I know that two is pulling on it with five newtons because it's not moving anywhere. Okay, now um, now we're going to go on to segment two. So if you look at segment two, let me draw segment two over here. I'll put it down here. Uh, 
Um, this was five newtons. I reasoned out that this has to be five newtons because the net force must be zero. That's Newton's second law. So I said, um, if it's not accelerating, so I said um, F net equals MA. And since there is no acceleration, then um, the, since uh, then this the net force must be zero, and if the net force is zero, then this had to be five newtons to give you a net force of zero. The given is that I'm pulling with five newtons. That's that's something that I just tell you. If I pulled with six newtons, this would be six newtons. If I pulled with seven, this would be seven newtons, as long as the string didn't break. Okay, now um, we know that if one pull, if two is pulling on one with five newtons. This is the force of two on one, five newtons. Then we know one pulls on two with five newtons. Now that's due to the third law. So this is the second law. I know that this is five newtons on two because of the third law. So uh, these are action-reaction pairs. One pulls on two with five newtons, two pulls, excuse me, two pulls on one with five newtons, then one pulls on two with five newtons. So that's the third law that's making this five newtons. Now two isn't moving at all, doesn't have any acceleration, so then I know that three must be pulling on two with five newtons. Okay, well then if we went to segment three, the same thing follows. So you see where I'm going with this probably. That um, if this is the seg this is this force right here is the force of three on two. This is the force of three on two. So then the force of two on three has to equal because those are action reaction pairs. So that has to be five newtons. The force. So this is the force of two on three. So then um, segment four must be pulling with five newtons. So you see how we say that there's five newtons throughout the rope then? That, that that just keeps getting transferred all the way down to the wall. And I know that the wall must be pulling on this final segment. The wall must be pulling on it with five newtons. So that means the final segment must be pulling on the wall with five newtons. So this is transferring my force. This five newton force that I pull with is going to be transferred down the rope and it's going to cause the that last segment to pull in the wall with five newtons. Now you got to remember that um, this hand that's pulling on this rope is not pulling on the wall. The rope is pulling on the wall. The hand is pulling on this end of the rope and that gets transferred all the way down and that's what we mean by tension. So it's to reason that through, we use the second law, then the third law, the second law, then the third law, the second law, then the third law, all the way down to get, to get the, um, the fact that the tension is the same throughout. Okay? All right. So moving right along then, what about if the string is um, accelerating? What if this box is accelerating? So you're pulling on this, and the box is accelerating. Well, um, if that's the case, we're going to make almost the identical argument. So like if I pull with five newtons this way, what I want to show you is that this last segment here will be pulling on the green box with five newtons of force, even if this is accelerating, as long as the rope is massless or negligible mass. Okay, so let's break this into a, a bunch of parts all the way down and let's call this one two three four all the way down this with this time to the left so the force of one on two okay the force of uh, excuse me the force of the hand on one is five newtons that's the force of the hand on one then um, we know that um, two has to be pulling on one with five newtons now let me give you that reason. So this is the force of two, segment two, on one. And that's five newtons. And it goes like this. The argument is pretty much the same as the last one. So if I do F net equals MA for this segment, uh, let me do it over here. So F net equals MA. Now there is an acceleration. Let's say it's going to accelerate at two meters per second squared. 
didn't mean to underline that. So, um, but the mass is is zero because this is a negligible. This mass is uh, the of the rope is negligible. So this is pretty much zero. So it means the net force must be zero. So that mean that's why if the net force is zero, then uh, the, this this being five newtons, this must be five newtons again because of Newton's second law. And then I'll I won't belabor this point too much, but for seg segment two. Now I know that um, one must pull on two with the same amount of force that two pulls on one. So that means that one is pulling on two with five newtons. And that means that three is pulling on two with five newtons this way. And so on. Okay, so now if we do have mass then this doesn't apply and and the tension is not the same throughout if this is a massive rope the tension isn't the same um, for each one of these pieces okay um, so did I have any other things I wanted to tell you about um, I think that's it we've already we've done enough I, I will uh, maybe make another video on how to actually calculate the tensions um, of systems like uh, where this like these how do you calculate those tensions all right thanks bye